Hello. Today what we're going to do is take a look at how we can change the default look or style of Greenstone. We're not going to add any content, so we're just going to use the existing demo collection, but change what it's going to look like. So the first thing we want to do is run the GLI and select File, Open, and choose the demo collection, and then click Open. Now once the demo collection is open, you can uh, preview it to take a look at it and you see the default Greenstone look or presentation. Now Greenstone has no really set pages. All pages are created when they're asked for. So really what we're doing is running a series of instructions that say what the pages will look like. And as we saw last week, most of the instructions for controlling the Greenstone interface are in the collection specific macro and they're grouped into packages. The package we're going to be working with today is mainly the style package. So the first thing to do is click format and select collection specific macros and we'll type in um, three macro packages to start. Package global, notice the capital G, package style with a capital S, and package about with a lowercase a for the home page. We also have a few custom graphics we're going to use. Not that much. We have a banner, a header, and a couple of other things. We won't use most of this. Uh, these are in the Week 10 folder of the 9720 Dropbox. Um, there's some images there in the Images folder. So copy those images to the Demo Collection Images folder, and we'll use those. Once you've got the images copied over, go back to the GLI and in the format collection specific macros, we're going to add some text to package style. First, what we're going to do is put in the style tag. So there's a macro called collection specific style that contains the uh, style tags that you'd see in the uh, header section of a web page. So the style type is always text CSS. So that's the start of the tag and we end it with a slash tile tag at the bottom. Now we're going to define or redefine the look of a number of Greenstone elements. For example, Greenstone uses an image to give the page the white color. Uh, we're going to change that, but we're going to set the background image to none and then change our page color to black. Now this is not necessarily a good choice. Uh, we're not running uh, a site of dubious reputation, but just to illustrate things. So what the style we're going to do today is not necessarily good style, but shows you how you can do things and it should give you some idea. The second thing we're going to do is the div bar. Div bar is that green bar, divider bar that's there. This is visual noise. We don't want it. We're going to change the background image to none and set the color to black. So it's going to actually, in fact, disappear because you can't see it. The navigation bar is that green thing for the menu bar. Again, we're going to set this to a background image of none, to get rid of the green, and set the color to black so it blends in with our black background. We're going to make our uh, text color white so it has sufficient contrast between our dark background. And just for fun, we're going to use the chiller font. Obviously, this is not a font that you would use for a professional look in your collection. And we're going to make it large. We're also going to change uh, the banner title, which is that stuff on the right that it breadcrumbs and things like that to change that from green to black. It's also going to affect our text banner which later we're going to replace with a graphic banner but for now that's fine. So put these in and that will change just a little bit of code will change dramatically the look of our Greenstone demo collection. So here is our new but not necessarily improved Greenstone demo collection. Totally different looking. Um, <laughs> Now what we're also going to do is modify all the elements of the interface just using the style, the global, and the about package mainly. So our next step is to change some of the things about the menu. Uh, we don't like the way the menu is handled so we want to change that to customize it. And here's an explanation of what the code we used in the style package does. Mainly uh, removing some of the green elements of the Greenstone interface, getting rid of that silly sidebar uh, visual noise, and changing everything basically to white text on a black background. Now removing the green sidebar gives us a bit more white space or 
Okay, so this collection black space, which should be fine. But if we needed a bit more margin, we like our page more centered in the screen, brought in a bit, not too wide. We could add a left and right margin uh, attributes to our body.bgi image um, part of the collection specific style macro. Okay, our first major task is to change how the navigation bar is going to look. Uh, right now we have the green stone default which has a sort of beigey background to it. Everything's in lower case. We don't like this. So what we're going to do is uh, change the instructions for the div nav bar element. What we're going to do is get rid of the background image, um, change the color, put a bit of margin around it, uh, transform the text from all lowercase to uppercase, uh, put a different font on it, and make it a little larger. So we're going to add all this to the style package. Now one of the things you can do is you can try out different styles. Um, and you can preserve your previous one by putting a hashtag in front of it. This makes it into a comment so it's not executed. So you could have any number of things in there until you decide which one you'd like to have. So now you see we've changed it to be a bit larger font and all uppercase. Now all uppercase is a little difficult to read. It's okay for one word but for long words, it's hard to scan. Usually it's difficulty scanning. And if you have multiple words, say a two or three letter menu labels, it goes right out the window. So not necessarily a good idea. What we really want to do is maybe transform that into being capitalized. Uh, and we can do that. We can actually change how uh, the text on the navigation bar does by uh, modifying the instructions for p.navbar. You notice we've done this a little uh, farther down here and that allows us to give it a nice menu. So here's code for our P navbar to change the text. Now one thing we've done, you notice we've turned off the text transformation. First we made it all capitals then we turned it off. If when you're creating your indexes you would use lowercase a small t for titles, it will now be small t. So you want to make sure when you're creating your indexes that you have capitalized the button name. The other thing we're doing is adding a little space. So this uh, menu will not butt up right against the indexes or against the banner. So adding a little bit of white space is good to set your menu aside from all the other elements on the interface. Now white space can also be added to your V-list for your index displays. Uh, so setting things apart a bit more so they look nicer and easier to read. Um, doing that usually requires doing it for every index so that's why we're not going to do it for the indexes. We're going to just do it in the package style and let that take care of it. Now another thing we want to modify in the Greenstone presentation is when a person acquires a hyperlink. So they've clicked on something, um, the background of that link changes to green. We don't really want that green. We want to get rid of the green stone look. So what we're going to do is change that so that uh, it is, sticks out by putting it in a different font and making it yellow and uh, sort of um, dimming out the other ones a little bit. So that looks like what I wanted to do here was actually have the text in white for all of the things. Um, make the text in, in the navigation bar white and the background black so that the other non-selected ones will be white. But I couldn't quite get it to work because I think on the home page a number of things are already pre-selected in some way. So I could get some of the text to change, the top menu would change, but not the bottom one, and not all things. So, But what I've done here is basically work to show you where you are right now. What index do you have selected? And here's the code in the style package, what we've done for the three um, states of a hyperlink. Now, the hyperlink is there, but it hasn't been selected. A hyperlink that you have selected, which we're turning into a yellow with a different font and uh, transforming it into capitals. And a hyperlink you're hovering over, something you're thinking of acquiring or selecting. Now one problem you may run into with your menu if you have a, a number of choices, like a fair number of indexes, or if you're using multiple words for an index such as browse by subject or click here to see some subjects something like that you're going to run into a space problem you're going to have too much on your nav bar one way of doing that is when making a smaller font reducing the number of words you could also uh, remove the amount of space between the menu items this is titled by the nav bar spacer if you set that to nothing 
this will bring your menus items closer together, giving you a bit more room. That goes into Package Global. Of course, you don't have to set it to nothing. You could decide to put a little style into it. In the past, we had used a vertical uh, pipe symbol to separate things, but we could do something here. Here we're going to actually uh, align the things to the top and put in a HTML custom code. The HTML custom code we put in is going to put a diamond. It's a special character. You go on the web, you'll find uh, there's a whole list of these characters. Uh, um, just putting in a diamond uh, as an example, not that it's a good example, but it shows you some of the things you can do, how you can format even the spaces between your menu items. The next thing we're going to customize is the mouse over text. Mouse over text is when uh, the user moves their mouse over a menu label, there's a description there of what that item does. So before they click on it, they can see what's going to happen. This is quite useful for users. Uh, the default is to say browse by index name, but you can change the browse by if you want into something different. You can also change uh, what the text says completely. So you could have a uh, click here to see an alphabetical list of all titles or whatever you want, whatever you feel is most useful to your intended audience. Now that we've added mouse over text in the package global for all the menu items, let's deal with the breadcrumb problem. The breadcrumb is that text in the top right corner that indicates where you are. Um, it's a bit large. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's useful or not. Certainly not useful on the home page. So what we may want to do is change it. Uh, what we're going to do here is change the green to a black round of black, uh, make it much smaller so it takes up less room, and make it stick out a bit more, differentiate it from the menus by putting it in yellow. This uh, code will go in the style package. And there's our code for changing it to a small yellow thing, So, and which kind of matches when someone clicks on subjects, they see the subjects up there as the indicator of where they are. Uh, we can also change how it's displayed if we want. The next thing is we may want to change what things say. For example, when you're on the home page, it says about, but really most people consider that to be the home page as opposed to the about page. So if we package about, we add the title about macro, we can set this value to home, which is now going to display home when the person's on the about page. So here we're going to modify the P banner title in the a style package to change how those uh, breadcrumbs uh, look up on the screen. So uh, we want to change that by adding the um, our black packing thing, uh, reducing the font size, making it yellow, and turning off the text transformation. Now once we're done that, our breadcrumbs are all nicely styled. You notice it's got capitalized, it's small, it's yellow, quote good. But we really don't want the breadcrumb on the home page. We're on the home page. We know we're there. Uh, we don't have to be told that. So what we're going to do in package about is change the definition of title about. We've set it to home. We're now going to set it to nothing by just removing the text from between the brackets. Now once we've made that change and selected file save and then go off to our web browser and refresh, we can see the home page has no breadcrumb. However, when the user clicks on another page, such as titles or subjects, that location will show up as a breadcrumb in the top right corner. Okay, now let's add our custom banner. We go off to uh, Format and then click General and the top URL uh, is going to be the banner for the home page. It says URL to About page. The home page uh, one is for the collection icon uh, for the library website where there's a lot of collections. So we have one, we click on it and it's going to go off to the images folder by default and we copied over images. We're going to select the one called banner.jpg. Now one problem with this banner is it's a bit large. It's rather wide which means it tends to cut off the top right menu. You see the preferences, home, uh, help can't be seen. What's the solution? We could reduce the size of our banners one way, or we may decide we don't really need the preferences help and home, so we could turn those off. To do that, we go into Package Global and add Home Link, Help Link, and Pref Link, and set them all to nothing. 
There we go. Now we have a lot more room for our bedroom. However, we have to remember we can't still make it too big because we kept the breadcrumbs on. And so for some pages, the breadcrumb is still going to have to be shown to the right. Now if we turn the breadcrumbs off totally, we can have even a bigger banner if that's important to us. Now we deleted the top right banner, but you could keep it and change some of the text on it. For example, preferences could be reduced in size by changing it to settings. Um, you could also decide not to allow them to change the settings, and there's no need for them to go to the library homepage, but you may want to keep the help uh, so that you're going to give them still some help. So having link text help on there would mean the help menu option would still be available. Now we had added white space to our menu, so we should be okay, but one of the problems with banners, particularly if they uh, have a color background that is different from your page color, is they may butt up against things. Um, this it causes a loss of legibility, particularly between the menu with text on it. So you may want to add an optional banner definition in your style package to put a little bit of white space, some padding or margins around your banner to set it off from the page a little bit. Now what we've done so far is fairly simple CSS, uh, but it works, it's effective. If you're going to go farther, you're going to need some resources such as a good book on CSS, uh, maybe a good website or something like that, because there's lots that you can do, but it gets a bit difficult. And again, the idea here is not for you to say, oh, I could grab that code, let me copy that. It's not to turn my work in back to me, but to give you some ideas of what can be done. So here, for example, we set the navbar spacer uh, and package global just to be a blank space. And then we've now made a bit more uh, button-like 3D kind of menu things uh, for our menu bar. So, I mean, uh, is it better? Maybe look a little bit nicer, but again, it's a bit more complicated to do. So you do have to dig in a bit to CSS um, as much as you're uh, comfortable with. So if you're not comfortable with something like this, there's no need uh, going this far. Now one thing you will need in your pages for your collection is a footer. It's important for users to know um, who's responsible. Uh, so you're having your name on there might be a good idea. Also, how many documents are in it when it was updated. They want to know how comprehensive the collection is, how recent it is. So we have to create a footer. First, what we're going to do is I'll do a simple footer on the About package, the home page. So I've defined a footer macro, uh, made, put an HR in, made it small, uh, added a bunch of uh, things that are going to give us that information for the home page. Now, it's important that the footer also appear on your other pages. The main other pages you're going to have are the search page, if you have a search function. So package query gets the footer. If you're keeping the help uh, function around, package help gets a footer. And for your indexes, so however many indexes you have, that's done by package document. So we put the footer there so that all the indexes will have a footer as well. Now we got the menu all sorted out, the breadcrumbs, the top right, and the footer sorted for all the pages. It's the home page you want to format. So the home page needs content explaining what the collection's about and who's it for and what you can do there, yes, but it also needs to be attractively presented. How do we do that? Well, first thing we want to do is turn off a bunch of the greenstone style. So we want to get rid of that help stuff that's automatically generated and the about this collection stuff and all the other things like that. So we're going to get rid of all those things. Um, what we're going to do is also add the optional navigation bar. It's a nice little one uh, centered rather than the uh, regular navigation bar. And then we're going to add text about. So the content macro here defines what goes on the page. This will also have the effect of removing the search function off the home page because it doesn't really need to be there. It takes up a lot of space. It's rather ugly. So let's get it off. So we're going to have the navigation bar and then the text about. So we're going to need to make a text about macro that's going to define what's on our home page. So here's the result of that code we just put into the package about. You notice uh, all the greenstone generated stuff is gone. We've got our footer. We have a uh, placeholder. Home page content goes here. We'll obviously have to put content. We have a menu and a banner. Perfect. Now, uh, what if you said, oh, but if I put a whole bunch of content in 
uh, that about general part where there's a little box and I've typed all types of stuff. You could copy that. This overrides it. So the content specific macro overrides whatever you typed in when you created the collection or add it later to format general. But you can copy that code and paste it into the um, package about the uh, macro that's describing the content for this page. Now, the question is, if we're going to put content, how are we going to lay it out? Now, CSS gives you lots of ways to lay content out on the screen. If you know CSS, you can create any kind of layout you want. But, uh, what if you don't know CSS? So defining these things and creating the code for it to put in your text about macro can be quite complicated. Is there a simple solution? Yes, I'm going to show you an alternative older way that's a little simpler than trying to lay things out using CSS. So this is what we're going to lay out. Now again, this is not a, an example of a great style, killer style. Uh, it's an example of what you could do. I don't say you should copy my style. I'm saying you should understand what's going on so you can develop something that is appropriate for your collection and your audience. But this is what we're going to develop. And we're going to lay this out using an older method that's a bit obsolete but still works using a table. Now our table is going to consist of a number of rows, I think about four rows and a couple of columns uh, that are going to contain the information we want. So what we're going to do is in the text about macro start with a table. Uh, we're going to put a bit of padding in it to get some white space. Um, we're going to define how high the first uh, column is going to be. Uh, we're going to set some colors just so you can see them, right? We don't. It's not going to match what we've got else, but we just set that. Uh, I made a H1 a header in there. We have a red color to go with our uh, chiller font, and uh, that's the first row. And then we're going to start the second row. So this is the code for the first bit. There's going to be, I think, three or four uh, frames here of code for our home page. So here's our second row. The TR, beginning TR for the row is on the first slide, previous slide to this. Uh, and this has a column uh, with setting the size, the color, font, family, uh, creating a paragraph that welcomes the collection, blah, 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 and all that. Uh, that ends that row and that column. Uh, the text for this is in the PowerPoint slide, so if you use the PowerPoint slide, you can actually probably copy and paste the text from there. Now our third row is a little bit more complicated, uh, mainly because of the, the paragraphs we're using. Uh, we've got a couple paragraphs in here. Well, it's one paragraph. Um, but the uh, in the first column, the second column, we're sticking a picture in that we have in our images folder, and then we're putting a caption underneath it. And then the third row column doesn't have anything in it, really. It's just there as a placeholder. Um, so this is pretty well going to finish it off. The last bit uh, really isn't anything much. We're almost done. Here's what the last bit of code does. You see there's uh, three columns, three TDs, but one, one TR, one row. So this allows us to uh, split the text up. Now we could adjust the uh, proportions of these. Uh, we should probably make the first column a little wider for the text there. So we can have text columns that are easy to scan and read. Um, we have a big image here. It could actually be a preview of a movie someone could watch. Um, we can have uh, this adjusted the size fairly well. So it gives us a chance to lay things out on a page, adjusting the proportions of our uh, columns and uh, in our table. Now the last row is just a single column. It's going to contain our footer. So what we're going to do is copy the footer information in there and delete the footer one off the page. Uh, we'll take that out. And so now it's going to go down here. You notice I've changed the color of, of it and made it smaller, uh, spawn 40%. So now we've got the footer right there in our table. So uh, it's done. Uh, it's not bad. I mean, it's a simple way of playing things out. Uh, there are better ways now using CSS, but they're a bit more complicated. So this is a way of uh, making your home page look fairly attractive without having to learn a lot of new coding techniques. Now, one thing we could do to make the connection a bit more fun is to um, make a big first letter. We can indent paragraphs, which makes sense. They're easier to read. Books indent paragraph on websites. But we can also make a giant first letter here using a bit of complicated code. Uh, I'm not sure if the effect's worth it. I've also put that red background on it. Uh, again, uh, it's not examples of good style, 
but things that you could do. A medieval collection of manuscripts might have a nice medieval first letter there. That might be good. So the thing is, in CSS, there's lots of stuff you can do. So getting a good book on CSS, something by uh, Elizabeth Castro is a good idea. Uh, websites have lots of information of what you can do. So there's easy to find charts of uh, all the properties you can set and just play with it. Play with it to see what you can do. Here's an example of uh, all the things you can do with background stuff. You can see there's lots of attributes and values you can do to uh, customize uh, what things are going to look like. And when it comes to text, there's lots of things you can do from choosing a font, how big it is, uh, weights, styles, heights, spacing, tons of stuff you can do to control exactly how you'd like your text to appear. Color is also useful to know what to set. Now, if you don't have a good color sense, one of the advantages of the internet, there's tons of apps out there that allow you to look at colors and then will generate a list of complementary colors. So you say, oh, okay, well, those colors go together so that your website doesn't look like it was uh, a green shag carpet with a um, fake wood paneling kind of look. So you can get the colors and fonts you need and uh, choose something that's going to look attractive. What you want to do is use these techniques to bring together a home page that uh, one way brands your collection so the user arrives on it, they know what it is, what it can do, and they have a sense of, of the whole thing when they arrive on the home page. Uh, this is known in some things as the trunk test after Steve Krug's book. Uh, when the person gets out of a trunk of a car for some reason, they go to your website and they want to know instantly what's this all about. So I'm going to show you some examples of websites, how people have used these techniques to come up with a home page and a website that is consistent. Uh, it also helps the user to understand what they can do there.